Good afternoon, Gihan. And thank you so much for coming, all the Kabari magazine. It's my pleasure. Thank <laughs> you. Gihan, I have a question. Yes. There are uh, quite a few Indonesians who went to paralegal mm -hmm. and uh, look for asylum, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, they, uh, the paralegal actually didn't do the work and they ran away. Uh, so now they are out of luck, pretty much. Um, is there anything that they can do? Definitely. We have a great published opinion called Virijana v. Holder. Um, this is one of also our cases at this office where the Ninth Circuit has held that if there is an immigration fraud uh, committed by an immigration consultant, money was taken, and you, even if you don't have any documents to prove that, that client can still deem her case timely if she can testify credibly to that. For example, in my case, Viritiana went in and paid the paralegal $1,300, three months from her entry, three months. So she did. She worked diligently to make sure that her asylum case got filed on time. Not yet. She kept on following it with that immigration consultant day after day, and he keeps on putting her through until her one year was almost there. So she went in, she hired an attorney, and when the attorney filed the case past the one year, the immigration judge said, you know what, you have not shown me that that immigration consultant is an attorney and you did not file a complaint against it because that's technically was the law. You have to show ineffective assistance of counsel to be able to allow an application to be deemed timely. We never had an, a fraud by an immigration consultant. In that case, for the first time, the Ninth Circuit has created a narrow exception to allow an application to be deemed timely if a person can show fraud by an immigration consultant, okay, which is great. Um, she did not have proof she paid him a penny. She didn't have a receipt she paid him a penny. Only her credible testimony that the immigration judge was, you know, deemed her credible, that credible testimony was found alone sufficient to sustain her burden of proof. And the case was remanded back, and she's back uh, in court to seek asylum. Define what a professional consultant or immigration consultant is. An immigration is. consultant is any person who is not licensed by any state to practice law in the United States. Here, in order to be a person licensed to practice, you have to have went to law school, and not only just went to law school, but you have taken the state bar of the state that you, you know, are willing to practice in. If you don't have that, that means you are not licensed to represent people uh, as an attorney. So legally they cannot? Legally they cannot, and this is what they call under the criminal code an unauthorized practice of the law. I see. Okay. And there are many, in not just the Indonesian community, I'm seeing this in different other communities, in Chinese communities, in Egyptian communities, in, in Indian, in every immigrant community there are always people that pray on them, they don't speak the language, they know how to get them and they kick them up and say we'll help you, they take money and they actually defraud them. And this is what happened in my case. But that was a great win from the Ninth Circuit, creating another narrow exception for immigration fraud by consultants. And that's recently? Too? No, that came in in 2011. Oh, 2011. It's called Virijana V. Holder. I see.